Hello and welcome. Uh, today I want a quick word about a video produced by Ranty Flat Earth, entitled The Globers Have Some Serious Explaining to Do! Exclamation mark. Okay, so this piqued my interest because normally Ranty posts videos that show uh, the globe Earth uh, predictions or spherical Earth predictions match his uh, observations very, very closely. Uh, and he provides some fantastic evidence to support the globe Earth. Um, so I wondered if he really had stumbled across some great discrepancy between globe Earth predictions and uh, real life observations. So what Ranty did was he was 15.4 uh, miles from Walney Lighthouse. It was after sunset in the afternoon, late afternoon in winter in the UK, and um, he could see the lighthouse flashing just right at the horizon in his uh, in his video. He states the camera height at three feet. It's pretty close to three feet, but I don't think he actually measured three feet. And as we shall see, um, small differences here are probably going to make uh, enough of a difference to account for his observation. Um, the focal height of the lighthouse is 69 feet and Ranty calculates or used uh, those figures uh, in a curvature calculator to come up with a hidden value of 117.58 feet. Now what he's done here is to completely ignore atmospheric refraction even including standard atmospheric refraction, which isn't adequate at this, uh, at this time of day, as we shall see, um, the value should be 98.22 feet. Atmospheric refraction happens all the time. Uh, there are unusual conditions that cause it to change dramatically from uh, what is normal uh, and standard, and it's it will never be exactly at standard conditions, uh, but most of the time it's relatively close to standard atmospheric conditions. Um, but anyway, including standard atmospheric refraction, we have 98.22 feet. So we are roughly 30 feet, 29 and a bit feet to account for here. The lighthouse should still be a little bit below the horizon. And we need to find some sort of explanation for why we can actually see it in Ranty's video. I'll mention tide height here. Ranty mentions it. I don't think he's calculated precisely the amount of, by which the water was uh, above or below mean sea level. He's simply given a tide height of three meters. If we look at the tide heights on the day in question and the location in question, uh, we can see that at half past four in the afternoon, the tide height was 2.89 meters. It's a well after medium tide, it was halfway in and halfway out, uh, but not yet a low tide, which was two or three hours later. Now, what does this 2.89 meters mean? Well, there is a chart datum, which is what tide heights are referred to. And in the UK, the level is the lowest astronomical tide. So that is the lowest level of tide which can be expected or expected to be predicted under average meteorological conditions. So it's a kind of zero baseline. When, when it gets to low tide, this is the lowest it's likely to be. Now, sometimes the tide will actually go lower than that because the astronomical conditions and the meteorological conditions are such that um, you, know, you get a lower tide than the low datum point. But Ranty's uh, three meters, or this 2.89 meters, refer to the height above that low point datum. They don't refer to mean sea level. However, I've uh, had a bit of a look and 
the best I can do is estimate, and I don't think actually Ranty is very far out with the three meters that he stated here for the amount by which the water was below mean sea level. Now, if it's below mean sea level in Blackpool, it's also below mean sea level in Walney. And so that raises the effective focal height of the lighthouse by about three meters or about 10 feet. So we now have 79 feet of lighthouse. Uh, and we're expecting 98, meet under, uh, meet, uh, 98 feet under standard atmospheric refraction conditions to be hidden. So we've got about 20 feet to find. Now, I think that can all be found by atmospheric refraction, although any changes to the tide, any changes to the camera height will also have an impact. The reason I think atmospheric refraction will account for this is that the time of day on which the filming was done was about 40 minutes or so after sunset. The sun uh, set at 10 to 3 in the afternoon, and this filming was around about half past four in the afternoon. So what happens after sunset? Well, during the day, the atmosphere and the sea are warmed by the sun. Uh, the Earth is constantly radiating heat out into space, and heat from the surface of the Earth, heat from the atmosphere, gets radiated out into space. Uh, during the day, whilst the, day, uh, the sun is uh, in the sky, that portion of the Earth that's lit by the sun is receiving heat from the sun. And that's why the Earth maintains a, a fairly constant uh, average temperature. Obviously, temperature fluctuations and summer and winter and so on. Uh, but Earth remains relatively warm because this receives heat from the sun and is more than com or compensates for the heat lost to space. However, when the sun sets, the air in that part of the world that, where the sun is no longer shining starts to cool quite rapidly. It's just still radiating heat to space at pretty much the same rate as it was beforehand. The water acts kind of like a storage heater. So it, there is a heat energy within the, the, the water and the land of Earth. And the water starts to lose heat to space as well, but it does so by warming the atmosphere immediately above its surface. And so you get this layer, if you like, of air warmed by the water below. And this, uh, the, this creates a steeper gradient of temperature between the air immediately above the surface of the water and the air slightly higher up and slightly higher up and so on. So you get this quite steep gradient of temperature difference. And that gradient of temperature distance is what difference is what causes atmospheric refraction to occur in the first place. And the steeper that gradient, the more atmospheric refraction will occur. It actually doesn't take a huge amount of atmospheric refraction to account for this 20 or so feet that we need to account for between the 89 feet and the 79 feet. If we look at uh, Walter Bislin's curvature calculator, I've put in here 79 for object. It's a 15.4 miles diff distance. With an observer height of three feet and medium atmospheric refraction, it is still hidden. If we increase the refraction a bit, it starts to pop into view. Still at medium atmospheric uh, refraction conditions. So this is not 
strong atmospheric refraction or extreme atmospheric refraction, it's still in the medium range, or what, what Walter calls the medium range. And remember, it's only the focal height that's at 79 feet. So in order to get the light to be seen, we only need the top of that to uh, actually be seen. Uh, and the, the light will be visible. Uh, just actually forgot to mention something about focal height. So we'll go back to this. Um, lighthouses used to have these very large Fresnel lenses on them. Um, and the focal point was here, focal point of the lamp is here. And light was refracted by the lens so that a larger um, area of light uh, was sent out parallel to uh, the, the lamp source, if you like, um, all the way down. This is called collimating, uh, Anthony Riley, if you ever bother to watch this, um, which is uh, not what you were talking about when we had that little hangout. Um, however, that's quite an old fashioned kind of system. Um, this is the light in the current Walney Lighthouse. And you can see that. Uh, so the point I was going to make is that the distance between the lamp here, and the top of the lens could be several feet. Uh, and so seeing light from the lighthouse may mean you're only actually seeing this very top portion here, uh, which could be several feet higher up than the focal, focal height, which would be here. However, this is what the current Walney Lighthouse um, light looks like. It's a far more modern setup. And uh, I would imagine that the light itself is at uh, around about 69 feet uh, above mean sea level and 79 feet above uh, the sea level on the day in question. So I don't think this uh, focal height uh, and uh, lens um, situation is going to account uh, very much uh, for the height difference. I think refraction is the thing that will deal with it. But if, we, as I say, if we look at Walter's calculator, then with a, an observer height at three feet, um, we only, we, we still don't have to have extreme refraction in order to be able to see the top of the lighthouse. Uh, were the camera to actually be at four feet, then the amount of refraction required would be considerably less and getting starting to get close to a, a low level of um, atmospheric refraction, although still within the medium range here. So Ranty's observation um, which he claims requires some serious explaining. Well, yeah, I've been fairly serious about the way I've looked at it. But really, Ranty, what you're exploring here is the, uh, is the sort of very limits of what the curvature um, calculator predictions are for um, the sphere. And you're saying, oh, look, it, it's just a bit out at this particular point. Um, there's margin for error on everything that we're talking about here. Okay, the measurement of the focal height of the of the lighthouse, the um, actual tide level height, your actual camera height, with uh, just as I showed, a foot of difference there makes quite a difference. Even six inches would make a difference. The amount of refraction, uh, how quickly the atmosphere is cooling, how much the water is warming uh, uh, that air just above the surface. If you want Globus to have to do some serious explaining, then why not try and find something where you've got, um, say, 800 metres of discrepancy between what should be seen and what is seen. Just like we do with my observations on uh, in East Lothian in Scotland, where 800 metres of Ben Eam mountain is hidden behind the curvature of the earth. Uh, 
you know, indisputably, and no flat Earth explanation has can create enough magic to raise that 800 meters back up to be uh, above the surface where it should be, so we can see it if the Earth was flat. Uh, the recently published Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens observation that Conspiracy Cats has uh, has been showing is also uh, shows uh, over 800 meters of actual curvature that's there, that's dem demonstrated by that picture, which should not exist on a flat Earth. So here we have a flat Earther ignoring atmospheric refraction and not be and uh, atmospheric refraction accounting for the observation that he sees entirely, and operating at a level of right on the margins, you know, twenty feet here, ten feet there, you know, oh, it's a little bit out. When in reality, it's absolutely simple to demonstrate hundreds of meters of curvature of the Earth obscuring mountains and parts of mountains and other objects. How many observations do you have to make, Ranty, where you see huge amounts of buildings, of mountains, of the Isle of Man, of wind turbines, obscured by the horizon? How many of those observations are you going to have to make before you realise that it's not Globus who have some serious explaining to do? It's flat earthers who have some theories explaining to me. Thanks for watching.